It's the morning after the Jets' beautiful disaster, and it's time to talk about where this team goes from here at the quarterback position. I'm Glenn Naughton with Jet Nation Radio and JetNation.com. Be sure to log into JetNation.com where you can register and become a part of what is the most active Jets message board on the web. So I was going to wait a little bit to do one of these, but social media is on fire. Jets fans are understandably frustrated, angry, um, just, just a wide range of emotions, and who can blame us, right? I mean, it's unbelievable, but yet so very believable. Aaron Rodgers likely done for the year. We talked about it yesterday. Robert Sala addressed the media. They fear it's a, uh, an Achilles. They said it's not good. They don't have a diagnosis, but they described this situation as not good. And we saw the replays. You saw the calf pop. You saw, you've seen some some docs on social media who are really good at this. Dr. David Cho, who I mentioned yesterday, I mean, the, the guy's got his career batting average is, is over 90% from in the, the few years I've been following him on social media. Um, he said the Jets should fear uh, ruptured Achilles. I mean, how wonderful would it be if in the next few hours we find out it's not? But assume it is, because it probably is. So where do the Jets go from here? There's a lot of talk, a lot of debate, a lot of discussion. Um... Let, let's try to bring a little bit of, you know, everyone's everyone's so worked up right now, right? So let's settle down a little bit and and go over the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, first of all, the bad is that if, I mean, this team last night, if 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 you're a fan of this team and you've been following the, this roster they've put together, they showed last night they are an elite team. They played the Buffalo Bills, who were the favorite in this football game. Why? I have no idea. Think, I mean, think about that. Right, this is a team that was underdog to the Bills, and they just beat them with Zach Wilson again. If you have Aaron Rodgers, uh, you know a healthy Aaron Rodgers last night, this game's a blowout. It, Buffalo couldn't score. They scored one touchdown, kicked a bunch of field goals, turned it over four times, three interceptions for Jordan Whitehead, forced the fumble. Michael Clemens, it was picked up by Quentin Williams. This this team was lights out. Special teams, obviously, that special teams game winning play. Brees Hall looked like he hadn't missed a step. Um, you know, so, so much good in place right now. So the question becomes, what do you do at quarterback? Because that's your weak link. And that's where you've got to, you've got to have some strength there. So Zach Wilson, let's talk about Zach Wilson again. I've done a couple videos on him in recent weeks saying, and, and listen, I don't know what the problem is with people. Why can people not understand that if myself or anyone else says Zach Wilson has improved, there are people that when you say those words, what they hear is Zach Wilson is now an elite quarterback. And they flip out. They How dare you? How dare you say that? He's still garbage. He's still trash. Nobody's saying he's an elite quarterback. No one's even saying he's a you know an average quarterback. What I've said, and what some others have said, who have taken the time to go back and watch the film of Zach prior to this season, and then what Zach did during the preseason, and saw that he got better. And he undeniably got better. Now, got better doesn't mean is great. Because he isn't great. We saw last night, he there were some ugly pieces to his game. However, there were some much improved parts to his game. And I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, when I did another Zach video saying, look at him with the pressure. With the pressure in his face, he's hanging in there and making throws. He didn't used to do that. He's throwing the ball accurately inside of 10, 15 yards. He didn't used to do that. The fact that he didn't do those things before and he's doing them now, that is the very definition of improved. So he has improved. Has he improved enough to the point that you can look at him and say, this guy's going to win us a Super Bowl? I would say probably not. But we're not going to find out overnight. And the Jets aren't trading for anyone right now. I, I sent out a tweet last night with some free agent, veteran, you know, guys that nobody really wants. I sent out one tweet saying, uh, you know, Gardner Minshew, and I like Minshew. And that tweet was more pointing out the, the, the similarities between Minshew and former Bears quarterback Jim McMahon because of the recent conversations about how this Jets defense can be as good as the 85 Bears. Well, what did the Bears have? They had a quirky, weird personality guy out of a small school who wore a headband and loved the spotlight said a lot of wild stuff, like that's all Gardner, and and found ways to win games despite not being the most physically gifted guy. All of that across the board is Gardner Minshew. 
However, week one just wrapped up. How many teams are giving away capable NFL quarterbacks while they're technically still in it? This this isn't a situation where teams... I see people saying, go get Matthew Stafford. There was a report two days ago. Two, 48 hours ago. It was reported that the Jets called the Rams about Matthew Stafford this offseason. And it was a quick call because the Rams said, no, we're not dealing him. So the Rams were dealing him then. But I'm supposed to believe that now, in season, with five days to prepare for their next game, the Rams are going to trade Matthew Stafford? But they didn't trade him when doing so would have given them several months to prepare for life without Matthew Stafford? Stop it, folks. That Matthew Stafford isn't coming. There might be a trade for a quarterback at some point, but that's only going to happen after Zach Wilson gets his opportunity and with the trade deadline approaching, if Zach Wilson is still a 150 yards a game, one touchdown a game, one to two to three interceptions per game, if he's still that guy, then the Jets have to make a trade. This is a Super Bowl roster with an average quarterback. If Zach Wilson can't be that, they've got to move on. But they're not going to do that right now. Now, they might go sign somebody. You might go sign a Nick Foles, Carson Wentz, somebody to be your vet backup right now because Tim Boyle, I don't see that happening. Nice guy to have around as a QB3, fine. But you've got to go at another arm. So if you, But if you're doing that, you're not doing it. You're not adding someone to replace Zach Wilson. If that was the plan, you, you would have added that person months ago and had them compete with Zach in camp. But Zach, the Jets have made it clear this was a reclamation project. They were going to see it through. They didn't want to see it through this quickly. They didn't want him to be under center this quickly. But here we are. And, I'm, you know, I'm not going to get into all, you know, I don't know how many times I'd said this year that this team needs to add a vet backup. What if Aaron Rodgers gets hurt? To hinge your, you know, to, to trade for Aaron Rodgers and pin your hopes on a 39-year-old quarterback and a, I mean, I was saying when Minshew was a free agent, get Minshew, get him now. You know, now you'd feel a lot better at your quarterback spot if you had him. Jets passed on Minshew, they go out, they get Rodgers, okay. Well, now you're pinning your hopes on a 39, you know, soon to be 40-year-old quarterback or 38, 39, whatever, whatever. I think he's going to be 40. Um, those guys get hurt, right? They either decline or get hurt. Um, to think Aaron Rodgers was going to get hurt after one damn pass attempt. Cruel joke from the football gods, right? I mean, how? what else can you say? That entrance last night, that electric entrance, that crowd as loud as I've ever heard it, you know, on on uh, <clears throat> on the TV screen, of course, running out with the flag, and that that will probably be Aaron Rodgers' Jets career highlight reel. He's listen, might he come back from an Achilles? Maybe, but feel free. Listen, there's a comment section down below. Go ahead and give me a list of the top three. 40-year-old players to come back from a ruptured Achilles and play at a high level, or to come back at all from a ruptured Achilles. Aaron Rodgers said on the Pat McAfee show, and we, you know, I talked about this at the time of the trade. I talked about it after the trade. I said, guys, I don't know if you were listening, but he said before deciding he was going to play, he had to put his body through some things to see if his body can still hold up to an NFL season. Now, as it turns out, his body held up to four NFL snaps. And it's not his fault. We heard Robert Sala talk about it. You can see it on the film. You know, the, the play was drawn up to be a quick hitter. The ball should have been out by then, but it wasn't, right? Dwayne Brown didn't sustain the block long enough. Feel bad for him. Vet player, vet pro. Love the way he carries himself. He's got the right attitude, right mentality. Um, but it is what it is. Didn't sustain his block for long enough. His man came free, and he... Hits Rodgers. Rodgers tries to fight going down. It appears the left foot sticks in the turf. The rest of his body goes forward, and you see the left calf pop. So, there's nothing you can do about it. Rodgers is out. Zach is in. Nobody is trading a starting-level quarterback in week one. I mean, sure, you might be able to pry a backup away if you want to grossly overpay for a guy. That, you know... 
you ready to give up a first round pick for someone's backup quarterback? Which, and let's talk about that. You know, I was going to, that, that's another topic I wasn't really going to touch on because it's, there are bigger things to worry about. But I've seen a handful of fans, <clears throat> I've seen a handful of fans say, oh, at least we didn't lose our first rounder, you know? And then I see other fans getting angry at them. Like, to me, that's, that's logical versus emotional. And I get the people are emotional right now. Not a good day. But how bad would this be? And I, I said this during the offseason. Um, and I'm thank goodness it didn't play out this way. But what if this had been week eight? What if Aaron Rodgers made it to week eight or week nine and then had a season-ending injury that could be career-ending injury and you didn't have a first-round pick? To look at this and say at least we still have that one, that's a logical, non-emotional take. Like, people getting upset that fans are happy that this disaster isn't compounded by not having a quarterback or a first-round pick? Listen, that, that's fine. Be emotional if you want, but don't get mad at people who are looking at logically and just saying, Jesus. Because this is a deep quarterback class, folks. It is. There are a lot of guys. We talked about, about this the other night on Jet Nation Radio. Myself, Dylan Term, and Chris Schubert, we were saying that, you know, this draft class, we, you know, we only talked about it for a few seconds. But we said that these, you know, there are a lot of QBs in this class. So if Zach doesn't play well, maybe there's a deal there. Maybe there's a deal to be made. Um, you know, maybe there's a trade down the line. But you keep that one now. You keep that first rounder. Because even a late first rounder might net you a solid quarterback this year. So you still got the one. You gave up a two, you know, and listen, I love Joe Douglas, but I saw Connor Hughes tweet out the Jets are only giving up a two because they protected themselves against something like this. Uh, I don't know if I'd call that protected. I don't know if I would, as an owner, you know, if my GM comes to me and says, uh, that new quarterback we got, he threw one pass, and now we got to give up a second-round pick for that one pass. I wouldn't be like, oh, that's awesome. Thank goodness it wasn't a one, and we only gave up a two. This is why, when the deal happened, there was, a, you know, there were a few of us, me being one of them, a few fans saying, how did you not include playing time, like performance and playing time in the deal? What if Aaron Rodgers, again, nobody thought it would last one pass. But, I, you know, uh, we were saying, what if he gets hurt in week two or three? Uh, is there there's a chance that the Jets can trot Aaron Rodgers out there and he plays three or four games and you have to give up a second round pick for that? That seemed crazy. Well, now you got one pass attempt and it costs you two. I mean, it is what it is, right? crying over spilled milk and all that. Just be happy they still have the one. Be happy there is a hell of a core in place. But at the same time, be pissed off that he's, he's hurt. Be everything, you know? But don't don't get mad at fans who are looking at the, you know, the one somewhat positive thing to come out of this. And don't get mad at fans who are pissed off that they don't we don't have a quarterback right now or a proven quarterback because it's Zach right now. As I said, you, if you hate him, fine, hate him, but he's the quarterback. And until they know more about him, he's going to remain the quarterback because they're not going to go out and let themselves get fleeced for a mid-tier backup quarterback. And they're not going to just toss Zach aside without seeing if he can play at a higher level. Now, last night, and I said this on the wrap-up, they didn't ask him to do a whole lot. It, it reeked of a guy that a team had zero confidence in. Like, they literally just went out there and said, don't let this guy throw the football beyond 10 yards. And that's what he did all night. Everything was dink and dunk. And, but the Jets are good enough that they can do that. However, if you're going to try to make it, make the playoffs and make some noise, you're going to have some games where you have to throw the football. And the Jets are going to have to find out here in the next four or five weeks if Zach Wilson can be a guy who can drop back and throw the football down the field accurately. Because up to this point in his career, he hasn't been. But like it or not, it's him. Zach's the guy. Any major any major move is going to come before the trade deadline. And a lot of these names we're floating right now are I, Joe Flacco, no. 
um, that worthless. Stafford isn't coming. Brady's not coming out of retirement. I mean, I can't imagine how much money they would have to give Tom Brady to come out of retirement. Is Woody Johnson that crazy? Is Woody Johnson that upset? I mean, Woody, look, Woody was all in on this. You know, big payroll, big time players. I think it's clear Woody wants to get off this, off the schneid, get off this playoff drought, win a damn Super Bowl. But <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Life is a Jets fan, right? But as far as the quarterback position goes, there will be questions. I think we'll have answers in the coming days. Someone's got to come in as a vet backup. Maybe a deal at the deadline. Hopefully, Zach continues to improve because he has. But has he improved enough? We'll know. Talk to me in a month. Talk to me in five weeks. And then we'll talk about whether or not Zach Wilson has improved enough to the point where the Jets can just stick with him, let it ride, and try to get into the postseason. 